So I watched something like this here about Vegas. The city the mob made. Oh, oh, doesn't that sound interesting? The mob. <laughs> Well, take the word mob and put it backwards. Bomb. <laughs> yeah, the mob is fake. <laughs> I know you want to believe it. So guess what? The mob never made or built Vegas. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you and take you on a little journey, historical journey, and show you the mob stuff is just to get you to go out there and waste your money. <laughs> so we go back to the history of the city of Las Vegas. And something very important is going to happen not too far away from the city of Las Vegas. Which means ultimately the location of Las Vegas was well mapped out in advance before this major project. Let's listen in. About 20 miles below Boulder, we three got in a boat and we sized Black Canyon up. When we were there, we discovered a stake that was set by Homer several years before. Black Canyon was more accessible and more solid than Boulder Canyon. The canyon could bear a heavier load. And Black Canyon had one other crucial advantage. I discovered it was possible to actually build a railroad from Las Vegas to the top of the Black Canyon dam site. We could get the resources, millions of tons of materials, down to that dam site on a standard gauge railroad. As I've said many times, the Lord left that dam site there. It was only up to man to discover it and to use it. In late 1922, Herbert Hoover and the Colorado River Commission met again. Pop Squires um, and several other boosters from Las Vegas went to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where these representatives from the seven states were meeting. Okay, we're going to build a dam on the Colorado River. Um, Pop Squires said, yeah, great, this is going to be great for Las Vegas and L.A. and the Imperial Valley and everybody else. But how are we going to divide the waters? California is going to get most of it because it's California and it's big and it's growing and it's always big and growing and developing. Nevada gets 300,000 of those seven and a half million acre feet. But for C.P. Squires, even this amount was a triumph. It was my father who insisted that in the distribution of water, Nevada be allowed 300,000 acre feet. Nobody at that time thought we'd have much use for it, but he insisted that... So, early in the 20s, the site to build a huge dam is before the eyes of the hoaxers. And in 1928, that particular site will be approved by the Congress. And the President will sign off on it too, so that at the start of the year, of 1929 they are ready to get going on this project. Now of course in hoax history it's referred to as the Great Depression will strike in 1929. Now remember everything before you on the wall of the cave is put there using the analogy of Plato's cave. I'm not denying that there were some hard times at all. But once again, what was called the Great Depression was something created and put in front of you just as the current happenings are the same. They are created and the images are on the wall for you to see. 
you are chained you are watching these images on the wall because you're in Plato's cave okay so in 1929 they're ready to go with the Hoover Dam construction it will be the largest appropriation ever and construction will begin about 1931 with conclusion in 1936 now this massive construction will bring in massive numbers of workers so what does that mean well guess what that means Las Vegas is going to be uh, utilized sorry that's from a former video <laughs> Las Vegas is going to be utilized as a um, staging ground for workers to come and spend their money while thousands and thousands of workers will be working to create the most massive concrete structure in human history known today as Hoover Dam so there were massive numbers of workers now it might have been that originally they were planning to uh, have folks live right in Las Vegas which was about 30 miles away however it became pretty clear that this distance was just a little too far away for workers to reside now it didn't mean that workers couldn't take their money and go to Las Vegas since that it would be maybe 25 30 miles away so now while they're building this massive concrete project over a period of five to six years folks will decide to take their earnings and go to the town called Las Vegas and blow their money on guess what alcohol gambling prostitution and the state of Nevada will legalize gambling in the year 1931 gee 1931 that coincides with the actual start of construction of Hoover Dam are you beginning to get the picture in other words it was a place to recover money that was given to workers for hard work and let them come and waste it in Las Vegas and in the meantime that would build up another hoax Las Vegas so it's a double hoax now why do I say double hoax well Hoover Dam is a gigantic hoax there are some symbols uh, monuments right in Hoover Dam right now they will show you it's occult now what do I mean by that I mean that Hoover Dam is the largest deception in the world to convince people that electricity is generated basically speaking electricity is not generated electricity is harvested electricity is harvested and where is it harvested from the air that is correct while somebody might point their finger and say well what about Hoover Dam look at all the power that generates they cannot take you 
to an actual generator within 20 miles of your home, let alone 50 miles, let alone 100 miles. And don't give me any repercussions about atomic plants, nuclear power plants. They're a hoax too. They just boil water. Your electricity that comes into your home came out of the air or atmosphere. And it was harvested, put into an electrical grid system, and came into your home. Now, Hoover Dam was built to be the best single hoax site to convince people that there are factories of electricity, generating electricity to get into your home, when the reality is the electricity comes into your home right from the atmosphere, mediated by your local or state or county electrical grid system. And that's why you pay an electric bill for the grid system and the repairs. You do not pay it for generating electricity. All right, so this is a double hoax. Now that would be in your 30s. So basically speaking, we're going to drop the 30s. Vegas is built in the 30s by uh, the federal workers are coming to work on the dam, those employed by the federal government. So what's the next segment? Well, the next segment is your 40s. And here's the deal with the 40s. You have the hoax of the Second World War, that there's a need to drop bombs from airplanes and kill people. So you have to train flyers to fly bombers and fighters and maintenance people. At that particular time, the aircraft and the pilots are under the U.S. Army. The Air Force has not been created. So, it was said that the best flying weather is, guess where? Right near Vegas. So now, more people will come because of the federal government and be nearby. And who are they? They are the ones who were drafted and or the ones who volunteered to serve as pilots in the U.S. Army in the division of air flight bombers and fighters and all of that. Now where will they train? They will train not far from, guess where? Las Vegas. So now the government in the 1940s has once again supported that obscure city in the Mojave Desert with scorching heat, with lots of people, lots of willing participants to come and spend their money on what? Gambling, alcohol, and prostitution. All right, so I got you through the 30s. I think you're seeing the pattern. I got you through the 40s. Well, what about the 50s? Well, guess what? 
You're about ready to enter into what? The Atomic Age. Let's listen in on what will happen. International observers come by invitation to join scientists, military and civil defense authorities making a study of the test. of specially chosen types of buildings with dummies inside them has been erected to study survival chances in an atomic explosion. They're just All miniatures, the by the way. The buildings and their contents will test the effect of the bomb at distances ranging from one to two miles. The extent to which food will be contaminated by radioactivity will also be studied along with the effect of blast on communities. All of this was filmed in cameras concealed inside and outside in the buildings Lookout take Mountain. pictures of the blast scenes. Near the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. The bomb itself is contained in a That's where they will create the mushroom the cloud. The famous mushroom cloud. Tanks move into the blast area, and officers are to occupy trenches only 2,600 yards from the bomb, the closest ever in a test. Night. And army personnel with recording equipment wait for zero hour as others check their cameras. Put on your bomb. On your the eye shield. Of our time is exploded. Inside the Holocaust, cameras record the havoc. Those are miniatures. That's all it is. There was no atomic bomb. The only thing that was split was your skull. Not an atom. They split your skull. They could go in your brain. Those are miniatures. That was the best they could do in the 50s. Get ready. There's your mushroom, people. The magic mushroom. <laughs> well, you can see I have fun making this. All right, so where is this all going on? Where is it going down? Well, guess what? Not too far from Las Vegas. So, you have the 30s. Hoover Dam construction will feed and supply Vegas with lots of willing participants to spend their money. The 40s, you have lots of soldier boys. You have lots of money to go to Vegas. The 50s, you have nonsense like this. Come out and see and drive by the, the area where the atomic bomb exploded. Now, of course, the 50s in Vegas is going to then begin to develop with show business. And that's where you get your uh, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Rat Pack and all that stuff. All right? So the 50s will be about music and then again... Things will get recreated here and there. They'll even try, I believe, in the 80s or 90s to try to make it like uh, Disneyland. Bring in acts. And try to convince you that this is good for your children. Bring your children out. Okay? And then will come Passage, and I'm not sure the exact point in time. I think it was the 80s. I apologize I don't have all my dates right and everything, but then they will pass the legislation that says corporations can own the gambling casinos. They're no longer just individualized uh, uh, small companies. They're major, large corporations. So, what am I trying to tell you? I am trying to tell you something. All right? Let it be put into the compact. 
In November 1922, six states signed the Colorado River Compact. When you look at the 20s in Las Vegas, like, okay, we've got, we've got aviation coming in, we've got the Arrowhead Trail Highway coming in, and that, that getting improved. You see, it was all planned, okay? They knew it would be developed because all the significant legislation would occur. All the significant hoaxes would bring the people. So you can take a desecrated <laughs> desert dry spot and turn it into what? The gambling capital of the world. So, let's go back to what I said originally. I watched these uh, episodes from this, and none of what I showed you was from this, but that's just to let you know, you know, what goes on with me. I watched the episodes, <laughs> and I began to see the pattern. No, the mob didn't build Vegas. <laughs> the government built Vegas. No, the mobsters didn't own casinos. Because the mobsters are fake. Who do you think owned the casinos? The government. And who is the government? Well, ultimately, it's the British Crown. <laughs> it's the corporation outside of the city of London, the big city, or you might say London proper, the small city of London. That's where the money flow is. And that's where the money goes. And they will tell you nonsense. Oh, the mobster skimmed the money off. In other words, as soon as they made a lot of money, they put it in a suitcase and had a runner. And the runner went and took it somewhere and they did some money laundering. They called it skimming. No, they didn't have to skim anything. Why? Because basically speaking, from day one, it was the federal government running the whole thing. And who's behind the federal government in the United States but England, the crown. Now... You grew up believing that George Washington fought the Redcoats and George Washington made the United States free of England. Well, it was all BS, people. <laughs> Basically speaking, the character called George Washington is the same character as King George the Third. In other words, the United States was never free of England. Never. And even as I speak to you right now, it is not free of England. It is under the rule of England. It always has been and as far as I can tell, always will be until one thing occurs. Jesus the Christ returns. Now the word Vegas means meadow. And it was because there was some water out there and they could um, have a little place for some possible gardening, or you could see vegetation growing in the middle of the desert. Well, you know what? You need some hope. 
You need a Vegas. You don't need a place to gamble and rule and ruin your life with money being lost. You don't need that. You need a meadow. You need a beautiful little spot where there's nice, cool, refreshing water. And that cool, refreshing water is the Holy Spirit. And that cool, refreshing water can feed any soul, spirit on the face of this earth. But be aware that the Holy Spirit is always about showing you the Lord Jesus. So I'm trying to show you the Lord Jesus because these hoaxers think they are fooling. But they were not fooling God Almighty. And they're not going to fool me anymore. And I want it to be true for you, my friend. That they will not fool you anymore. Vegas is a product of a phony government. And incidentally, it was 1933, everything of lawful government disappeared. So you can see how the construction of the Hoover Dam and even the rise of Las Vegas is absolutely coordinated with the loss of a lawful government in the United States and the profiting of a phony government. I'd like to thank you for watching and I do appreciate you hanging in there with me. I know my videos are primitive. I know my camera's not always focused. <laughs> I hope I'm focused. And I know they might be considered long because many people want a video that's like three minutes and that's it. Well don't succumb to that stupidity of a one-minute attention span. So I'd like to thank you if you got the end of this video. Blessings in Christ Jesus to all of you. End of video.